that European migrant crisis, we'll get to that in a moment, and Daniel Andrews and that Richmond injecting room now permanent. We'll get to that uh, before we close tonight. But let's go to the issue yesterday, raised by Gary Banks, long-serving head of the Productivity Commission. Respected, I have to tell you, on all sides of politics. He wrote brilliantly in The Australian, says Australia is going backwards on energy, industrial relations, tax and government spending. And he said the net result in all of that is Australians losing confidence in our democracy and the nation's facing new sovereign risk problems. Joining me now to pull it all apart, former Deputy Prime Minister John Anderson and Senior Fellow at the IPA, the Institute of Public Affairs, John Roskam. Well, the two Johns, welcome to you both. John Anderson, I can't recall a more scathing assessment from someone with the calibre of banks. How did uh, you see it yesterday? Well, I think Gary Banks has done us a great service. As he's a fine servant of the land who have showed, who's shown us he's got a track record in how to improve prosperity, raise living standards, create a better country. Uh, and he can sleep well knowing he's done his duty. He has sought to warn us. Now, only the foolhardy would not listen. And let me say very gently but very respectfully to the under 40s in this country, for many of you, your education systems let you down. You're lacking, you've not been given the critical thinking. You feel your way into what seems good and right. In fact, there's no such thing as a free lunch. The very things that worry you, the need to get your own home, make a start in life, deal with climate change as you need it, require of us that we invest in a prosperous society and heed Gary Banks's warnings. It's of critical importance, and we know young people are very worried about their future. Here is the key. It's not in the mumbo-jumbo that you're getting on social media and from today's economic gurus, by and large, with a very few notable exceptions. I read with interest John Roskam his comments in relation to energy and he's putting his economic hat on and saying if you try and ask reasonable questions and you and you look at this transition plan and he says, you know, I'm no denier, that is what you get called just for raising, you know, quite responsible questions that public servants used to push governments on of both sides in the past. Well, that's right, Peter. And what... Gary Banks identified is that increasingly we're not a serious country. So he identified climate change. It's the preoccupation of a tiny elite minority. When you ask Australians, and the IPA has many other organisations have polled Australians, less than 10% of Australians will pay more than $100 for net zero. What struck me about Gary Banks's comments were, who else is saying it? Where are the business leaders saying it? Where are the business organisations saying it? Where are the business journalists talking about it? Too many people have either drunk the Kool-Aid or have gone with the masses. And Gary Banks has the bravery to do what not many Australians can do at the moment. John Anderson, what did you make of um, the entry into this whole uh, China-Taiwan war threat from Paul Keating today? I mean, vitriol we would expect, but the pro-China defence was was pretty extraordinary, even for Keating. Uh, well, that, that's the word for it. It is extraordinary. Funnily enough, I was about to pay him some credit because I think when he was Treasurer, he was in many ways a good Treasurer who argued the case and took us with him. But we would be very foolhardy at the moment, I'm afraid, to listen to him upon China. Either we believe in our values or we don't. If we believe in them, in freedom and prosperity, we need to join with like-minded nations everywhere to say we believe in the liberal, rules-based, global order uh, that has served us so well, has lifted so many out of poverty, has given so many people freedom. And if you can't see that that is absolutely under attack from without, as well as, frankly, from within at the moment, then there's no helping mm. it. John Roscoe, I want to go to this European um, migrant crisis. We know we've got 8 million people displaced out of Ukraine. Fair enough. But in 2015, a million or so went into the German borders. Mm. We now know two out of every three of those arrivals have been rejected as genuine refugees, but they won't leave Germany and Germany's not able to kick them out. Sweden too, open door there. Two million came in. That's 20% now of their current population. Many of them young, single, Arab men out of work concerns about integ integration. And we had 48,000 people 
crossed the channel into Britain last year, a quarter of them from Albania, a democratic country. This is out of control. And, and it's, I know Rishi Sunak's put it on the table to try and remedy it all, but uh, it, it is a huge problem for Europe. And John Howard and Tony Abbott got this right. Uh, if we're going to allow migrants who are coming to Australia for economic reasons, then we're going to be denying spots to real refugees. That's what's happening to the UK. You're right. The UK government has described Albania as a safe and prosperous country, yet something like 15% of uh, those claiming asylum into the UK are Albanian and something like 80% of them are men. Uh, the rest of the world is facing uh, what we have faced in Australia and what over time, after the opposition of the Labor Party, uh, Australia has been able to secure borders, maintain support for our um, asylum, mm. asylum seeker intake. Uh, and Rishi Sunak is going to have to stand up to the left, he's going to have to stand up to the European Court of Justice and he's going to say, no, uh, we need space for real refugees, not those seeking to leave prosperous and, as you said, democratic countries. I've got to leave it there, gentlemen. John Roskam, John Anderson, thank you as always.